very warm regards to all of you today the world is facing the greatest challenge of covid-19 pandemic which is becoming the global health crisis nowadays not just only the global health crisis but much more than that by stressing every one of the countries it touches it has the potential to create devastating social economic and political crisis that will leave deep scars in our lives today everyone is advising to boost up your immunity made by tv channels social media whatsapp public health workers and all now when you know all about the ways to enhance your immunity and the ways to maintain hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette being a physiologist i would like to enlighten the pathogenesis of sars coronavirus 2 in human body since covid-19 is highly transmissible disease therefore it is of great concern what actually is covid-19 and what actually is the sars corona sars corona virus 2 what it does when it enters in human body so let's start The disease COVID-19 is caused by SARS coronavirus 2 which got its name corona due to its crown like appearance when seen under the electron microscope. It is transmitted by contacts, droplets and fomites from an infected person. The reproductive number of COVID-19 is 2.2. The reproductive number actually means It is the number of persons affected from an infected person. Higher the number, the more an infectious or contagious a disease is. Interestingly, the reproductive number of common cold or influenza is 3. Of smallpox, it is 6 and of measles, it is 9. So even being lesser reproductive number than influenza, smallpox, measles, etc. What makes COVID-19 of more concern? The reason behind this is contagiousness of the disease no doubt is the main factor but unawareness towards the disease is of specific concern. Scarcity of the diagnostic kits and unavailability of the vaccine till date is the major factor. Moreover the mortality rate is 5.5% in comparison to influenza where it is only lesser than 0.2%. So we should definitely understand the pathophysiology and fate of coronavirus in human body. First of all I would like to describe the structure of coronavirus. It is simple stranded ribonucleic acid RNA protected by lipid bilayer with membrane proteins envelope proteins and surface proteins surface proteins are called the spikes which give it crown like appearance these spike proteins attach with the receptor sites of host cell host cell here is the alveolar cell of lungs of human body so these spike proteins are of main concern and they might be the real target of vaccine against coronavirus when it develops now how the coronavirus targets and infects the respiratory system to understand this we should know that lungs contain several sacs of alveoli each alveolus is concerned with exchange of gases oxygen we breathe in carbon dioxide we breathe out this oxygen is carried by pulmonary capillaries to transport it to the tissues these alveoli are made up of alveolar cells type 2 alveolar cells secrete the surfactant which coats the inner lining of alveoli to keep the alveoli open and allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to exchange now sars coronavirus 2 mainly invades these alveolar cells resulting in respiratory symptoms the virus targets and binds to ace 2 a receptor as well as an enzyme present on the surface of the alveolar cell ace2 is needed for virus to gain entry inside the cell without ace2 the virus could not 
gain entry inside the cell corona viruses generally enter the cells via endocytosis that means the direct fusion with the cell membrane once inside the corona virus particle is uncoated and its genome is entered into the cytoplasm since corona viruses have single stranded rna genome they can directly produce their proteins and genome by attaching to the ribosomes of host cell host ribosomes now act like viral rna to make proteins like rna polymerase this rna polymerase reads the positive strand of viral rna which is called transcription and produce the negative stranded rna which is called translation copying is called transcription and production of the negative stranded rna is called translation the negative strands will be used again by rna polymerase to produce positive strands of rna of the coronaviruses and also the other small subgenomic positive rna strands these subgenomic strands act as building blocks of corona viruses and are read by ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum of the host cell to form structural component of the virus and then transported to the golgi apparatus for nicely packaged and further processing with positive strands of rna this causes the replication of rna number of progeny viruses are now produced in this way which are released from the cell by exocytosis through secretory vesicles the virus not only replicates within the alveolar cell but also damages it this will initiate the inflammatory response injured alveolar cells release interferons cytokines as well as the intracellular components alveolar macrophages which are present in the alveoli detect the cell injury and come into action they respond to cytokines released by damaged alveolar cells and secrete more cytokines like tnf alpha interleukin 1 interleukin 6 interleukin 8 and chemokines like ip10 macrophage macrophage inflammatory proteins mip1 alpha mip1 beta etc these number of proteins attract monocytes macrophages and t cells to the site of infection t cells produce ifn gamma and promotes further inflammation so this all process act like positive feedback now the interferons primary function of interferons on the other hand which are produced during the cell damage is to induce the protection against virus to neighboring non infective cells so interferons protect the neighboring cells cytokines provoke the macrophages to secrete more cytokines and now if the now what happens in this inflammatory process if the immune system of a person is strong this inflammation attracts virus specific t cells to the site of infection as we can see in the right side of the diagram where they can eliminate the infected cells before the virus spreads neutralizing antibodies are produced by these t cells and cause blockage of the viral infection simultaneously the alveolar macrophages recognize these neutralized viruses and apoptotic cells and clear them by phagocytosis all together these processes leads to clearance of the virus and minimal lung damage resulting in recovery on the other hand if the immune system of a person is weak or defective as we can see in the left side of the diagram the person may show severe symptoms because in impaired immune system there is enhanced production of pro inflammatory cytokines leading to damage of lungs infrastructure this cytokine storm 
which i have already told that enhanced production of pro inflammatory cytokines will occur in impaired immunity cytokines storm even circulates to other organs leading to multi organ damage also secondly there is production of non neutralizing antibodies by b cells which cannot neutralize the virus in case of impaired immunity instant they may enhance the sars coronavirus 2 infection through antibody dependent enhancement thirdly there is reduced phagocytosis reduced production of antigen specific antibodies and reduced affinity of neutralizing antibodies this all leads to aggressive inflammatory responses which are strongly implicated resulting in damage to airways therefore disease severity in patients is not only due to viral infection but also due to host response now how does the body represent all this that is what are the symptoms of covid 19 first of all the release of cytokines are responsible for causing fever a prominent feature of covid 19 secondly the inflammatory response occurring in lungs parenchyma stimulates the nerve endings to initiate cough reflexes thus people often represent with dry cough tnf alpha and interleukin b on the other hand are the pro inflammatory cytokines and cause increase in vascular permeability of the pulmonary capillaries leading to leakage of the fluid into the interstitial space causing interstitial edema and then into the alveoli leading to pulmonary edema which is responsible for dyspnea or difficulty in breathing due to overall damaged alveolar cells first of all i should say these are the mild symptoms which can be represented in case of strong immunity in case of impaired immunity the severe symptoms will be shown what happens during impaired immunity due to the overall damaged alveolar cells the production of surfactant decreases leading to alveolar collapse resulting in impaired oxygenation and thus hypoxemia hypoxemia or decreased oxygen levels in blood stimulates the peripheral chemoreceptors in aortic and carotid bodies and the central chemoreceptors in brain stimulating cardiopulmonary centers to instruct the lungs to breathe more so as to increase the oxygen levels in the blood and also instruct the heart to pump fast so as to deliver oxygen to the body therefore patients are usually tachycardic or tachycardic kidneys show severe acute tubular necrosis with lymphocytosis and macrophage infiltration in summary corona positive patients may be asymptomatic or show mild symptoms like mild cough fever and shortness of breath if their immune system is strong healthy and in check or they may show severe symptoms like injured lung parenchyma pulmonary edema impaired ventilation perfusion ratio hypoxemia tachycardia tachycardia etc which leads to hospitalization of the patient if their immune system is weak or impaired studies show 80% of the cases show mild infection 15% show moderate moderate or severe infection and 5% of cases show life threatening symptoms like respiratory failure or ARDS acute respiratory disease syndrome shock multi organ dysfunction when heart kidney liver also get damaged Actually interleukin 6 stimulates liver hepatocytes to produce CRP which is a good marker of inflammation On the other hand further it has been found that males and females are equally affected mortality rate which is 5.5% increases with age as the age increases the mortality rate increases also increases with comorbidities 
लाइक डायबिटीज हार्ट डिजीज क्रॉनिक किडनी डिजीज क्रॉनिक लंग डिजीज एक्सेट्रा लिम्फोपेनिया इज फाउंड ड्यू टू द रिलीज ऑफ इंटरफेर इफ न्यूमोनिया और सिवियर सिम्टम्स डिवेलप then leukocytosis would be the main finding elevated crp is found elevated troponin may be found in case of involvement of heart because it is a marker of heart injury ground glass opacities are found in chest x ray and ct scans now nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swabs are used to diagnose covid-19 viral rna no protective treatment is found till now antivirals antibiotics home care for mild infections and hospital care for severe infections are the only measures due to non availability of the vaccines we have to rely upon our immune system the idea behind it is that when you don't have a potent weapon to combat your enemy best is to protect yourself with a strong and effective shield the recommended herbs and meals boost up our immunity by enhancing the production of interferons and antibodies to fight with these microorganisms ayush ministry has advised kwat which includes tulsi in four parts shunthi and dalchini in two parts and kali mirch or pepper in one part golden milk is also advised which includes turmeric in milk pranayam is advised exercise and meditation have similar effects that means they enhance the production of interferons and antibodies to fight with these microorganisms stress is the main factor to weaken our immune system so don't take tension don't fear from corona just fight corona hand hygiene coughing and sneezing in elbow good res- respiratory etiquette are the important measures to be taken giving a message at last that it is important to protect yourself but it is also important to protect others by applying the hygiene measures thank you so much stay safe stay healthy